Hi, I'm Ed Scar, and this is the M3 Stewart that I built a few weeks ago. The Italeri and Warlord kit for the M3 Stewart is quite infamous for being a poor kit to build, and I think unfairly, and so I'll be making an extra video, but I'll be spacing these videos out so it's not just Stewart month on my channel. Last video was me building it, and this time we will paint it up. But next time, in two weeks, I'll go into more detail on the specific weird parts of the kit, the weird parts of the instructions, and I'll also show off some of the extra 3D printable pieces that I designed for the kit. And you'll probably see those pieces in the background of this video as I paint them, but that's fine, just spoilers and all of that. Enough chatter, let's get to painting. Whilst I'm not a fan of the airbrush generally, I'm slowly working on how to use it properly, although it's still mostly a base coat machine for me. And as Yankee tanks are usually a solid green throughout World War II, a solid dark green was my base coat. However, I do want to have another go with the modulation technique that I tried in the M3 half track video. What modulation is in this context, it's similar to highlighting, Except instead of putting light colours where there's a light source, like the sun, and dark colours in the shadows, you frame each module of the model with light and dark, and that works very well for vehicles with armour panels, like tanks. With the half track, I put the black underneath the green, and it really didn't show very well. Whereas this time, I've mixed some black with my green, and I'm putting that on the top. The idea is to spray this slightly darker mix around the edges of each of the armor panels with the airbrush set to a low pressure, the diffuser taken off and coming up pretty close. This didn't work quite how I had hoped, but it did work somewhat, well enough to be noticeable at least. To strengthen this in the other direction and to lighten the vehicle as a whole, I used a lighter green mix with the dark green and I sprayed just a little bit into the middle of each panel. I had an abstract goal of spraying about half of the model overall with this lighter mix, but with no real way of measuring that, I think it came out quite fine actually, and it did help framing each of those armour pieces. Oh hey look, a sneaky M1 pack howitzer came along for the ride. Or, if I'm honest, I use this as my test piece for the airbrush. But we can finally put away the airbrush, and I can move on to some more traditional techniques. And under all of the weathering, I want to put some allied stars and some Yankee flags. I've had to admit that decals have improved a lot in the past 20 years. When I was first into model making, I just didn't bother with them, they were so bad, and instead I learned how to freehand. But now, these go on well enough, with a spot of matte varnish to hide the shine, and then weathering over the top, tying them into the model, they're a lot faster than freehanding. To kick off that weathering, I took out my old best brush, which has degraded to be my small stippling brush. And I stippled, stippled for a while, in fact. I started with black to show some damage, and then some brown to show some dirt. I stayed away from orange this time because I don't want this to look too rusty, but I did get some metallic silver on there as kind of chipped paint. And this is such an easy thing to do, and so effective that just the modulation and the stippling looks pretty good with no extra work. But extra work there will be. And I'm picking out some finer details, the spade and other tools on the back. Whilst they might have been painted to match the tank historically, I'm giving them a light brown wood colour for the handle and picking out the tool heads with the silver that I still had on the wet palette. And that silver also went on the sides of the tracks and the track horns, which was fiddly and time consuming. But after half of my lifetime on that, I went for the main section of tracks with some black and brown mixed together. As the Stuarts did have a kind of road surface in the middle of the track, I'm not sure if this was rubber or something else though. And to differentiate each track link, I used a black paint between each one. This is somewhat haphazard compared to a usual pin wash, but it's just to give it a nice strong edge. And if that lot wasn't annoying to paint, I also went to pick out the tires on the road wheels and the return rollers, 
which was also quite difficult to reach with a brush. Now, as you might be able to see looking inside the track sections, on several Italeri kits, including this one, the single piece nature of the wheel assembly means that they are way thicker than they should be, and that's so that they can actually be molded. Now, you can cut these down, I've seen people do that, and that works quite well, but I chose to just try and paint the tires where they should be and leave the rest of the kind of circle parts green and I hoped that, that would hide it well enough and you can't really see it clearly in this recording but that's more to do with my terrible camera work. To prevent myself from noticing anything else on the track assembly and then trying to paint that I stuck them in place. Well I've done all of this work with the modulation, the decals, the stippling and the details picks out now to ruin the entire lot with an all over black wash. And this is one of my homemade ink washes. It's a little heavier than the store-bought stuff, and so it tints the entire vehicle quite nicely into a kind of dark, grungy look. But it also pulls into the recesses, still giving a panel line effect over the whole vehicle. It is, as washes tend to be, still a little messy, and so some cleanup was needed. And my favorite part of this is edge highlighting. You can't stop me. And picking out the edges in a bright color really adds to that subtle modulation and really pulls the details out of the messy wash. I'm just using the straight light green that I had in kind of mixed with the dark green for my lighter step earlier. And so this is certainly going to be the brightest part of the model. I sometimes feel like I want to solidly outline every last edge on the model, but for the best effect, some subtlety does help. Put plenty on some of the bigger edges, some smaller dots along the smaller edges, and maybe on some important details like the vision slits and kind of leave out the boring parts. And speaking of boring parts, I've really gotten into the habit of painting up the headlights of these historical vehicles with the, an old fashioned gemstone effect. In this case, a bright blue top right, a pale blue gray bottom left as if the kind of reflection from the mirrors inside the lights, and then some specular highlights just in the form of some white dots. The rear lights weren't so easy, and I tried to feed some red light through the protective bar, which was a little messy, and so I just cleaned that up with the light green. Now there's not much more to do, but I do want to paint up the American tank commander that came with the Stuart's kit. You'll notice that I hit his jacket with the greens as I did the airbrushing, but I learned from the half-track video that the crew need to have a different look to the tank's armour, and so I'll change that shortly. I quickly base coated the skin and helmet in a light brown, and I washed the whole thing in my homemade dark brown ink wash this time. And once that was dry, I mixed some of my light brown with the dark brown ink wash, and what that does is create a heavy wash, which companies will try to sell you as contrast or speed paint or some other thing, as if it's not just watered down paint with extra medium. Now that gave his jacket just about the right look for what I wanted, and so I just painted in the skin and the goggles on his helmet, and he's done, ready to command his vehicle. And there it is, all painted up, ready for gaming. A relatively simple scheme, but one that comes out really how I like it. Slightly grungy and damaged, but not so much as to appear comical. Let me know in the comment section below your thoughts, and of course do pay attention in a few weeks time when I have my third part video showing all of the specific weirdness of the instructions and what I did with that second turret. But for now, I'm Edscar, always will be, and thank you very much for watching.